prior to a man or a woman of God arriving on the scene to where it's no longer about one person's gift or ability, it's about the power of God spilling out through the one body of Christ with the corporate anointing. Yes. No big eyes or little U's. Yes. It's God is calling us all to shine brighter. It's no longer in the pulpit alone. It's 2012. We're headed into a new season and a new world where you can do the stuff too. Yes. And it will become easier and easier. Isaiah 60 says, Gross darkness was upon the people and darkness upon the earth. And the glory of the Lord shall shine upon you, shall rise upon you. The darker it is, the brighter you're going to shine. Yeah. So that was kind of the close of the first day. I went back to my hotel room, got into prayer, stayed alone with the Lord. Friday night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Friday night, we did some teaching on how to hear God. And the power of God hit again. And this night, all kinds of other things began to happen. And there was a different demographic that had floated through because the people on Thursday night, some of them had to be other places on Friday night. And God began to move in that way. And Saturday morning, we had an impartation service. And we had an impartation service at the man's house in that condominium area. And while we were there, I got a phone call from Africa, from Israel Opera, from Nigeria, West Africa, as he does, the, does those miracle crusades over there. I said, Israel, I'm right in the middle of a teaching on impartation. I'm glad you called. And I put him on speakerphone, and we had a speaker system there, and I put the phone over the top of the microphone, and he began to pray for the people. Wow. And he began to prophesy. And as he began to pray and prophesy and release the spirit of impartation, two women that were there, boom, boom, fell out under the power. One bounced a head off a sofa. No catchers. Because we were in worship. We were in receiving mode. Bink, bink. What's going on? Thousands of miles away, the Holy Ghost is using a man of God through a cell phone device, and two women get touched by the Lord, and the rest of the people in the room got hit with the power of God. Well, you know who was there Friday night was that same pastor that got touched Thursday night. What? You know who was there Saturday morning was that same pastor who got touched? <laughs> what? He was at, anyway, we were invited on Sunday morning to his church. I know, that's right. <laughs> and so that was Saturday afternoon. Saturday night was the only night that I took up an offering. Okay. And while we were there, the Lord said, you know, give the people an opportunity to give. You know, if you're in a financially depressed demographic, yes. you know, it's, it's sometimes people are afraid to ask you to sow into a kingdom of the anointing or this and that so they can receive. And so we didn't do it to get from them. We did it to give them an opportunity to tap into the anointing because oh, what yes. you partner with, you get a part of. That's right. That's and so right. that night I preached on some things and gave some testimonies and people had been touched night after night after night. And so I called Anthony D. Uh -oh. <laughs> we just got back from Taiwan. And I said, Anthony. He said, yeah, Dave, how are you doing? I said, I'm in the middle of a service. I need a favor. And he said, you're in the middle of a service? I said, yeah. I said, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. I want you to pray over this offering. He said, okay. So I put the phone on speakerphone over the microphone. He starts praying over the offering. The presence of God fills. Uh, See, it's not about a minister hey. singular. It's about the multifaceted yes. body of Christ coming together Praise in God. unity yes. where there's no big eyes or little yes. use. Yes. Yes. That's good. Amen. He got done praying. He said, Amen. I said, Anthony. I said, Are you receiving any words of knowledge about healing right now? He said, I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> he said, Lord, I said, he said, Lord, are there any words of knowledge of people you'd like to heal right now? Jesus. And he was silent, and then he said, 
Yeah, Brother David, I am getting a word. He said, there's a person, and he named their problem. Wow. And it was specific. <clears throat> and the person didn't respond. <laughs> fail, fail big. <laughs> and he said, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed. Come forth. He pressed through. The person raised their hand. He said, everybody lay hands, you know, people near him lay hands. Now, he doesn't know. He's on a phone. He can't see. It's not video. He's moving by faith. Anyway, bottom line, person gets instantly healed. I said, any more words of knowledge? He says, hold on. Yeah. He says, there's a woman there with ringing in her ears. Silence. Nobody responds. He says, I'm clearly getting a word. There's a woman with ringing in her ears. And the woman raises her hand. He said, in fact, there's two women. Whoa. Another woman that had gone out under the power during the Saturday morning service when Israel Agrae had prayed, she raised her hands. And he said, don't lay hands on them. And I said, you two are to lay hands on each other. Oh. See, it goes from the pulpit to the pew. Yes. Long story short, these two women laid hands on each other as we agreed. Anthony took authority over the ringing in the ears. And the power of God came off the one woman's hands. Because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. The same power that raised Jesus yeah, Christ from the yeah, dead yeah, also yeah, dwells yeah. in your mortal body. Yeah. Greater is he in you Hallelujah. than he that's within the world. Yeah. Every sacred cow doctrine over that weekend that they had was annihilated. Yeah. You want to know what a sacred cow is? A sacred cow is if you're living in India and you're starving to death and a cow walks by, you'll die before you'll eat it. And God put them on the planet for your provision. And you're worshiping the cow instead of it being a provision. It's a sacred cow that you'll die before you'll partake of the provision. And that's what a sacred cow doctrine is. It will keep you from partaking of the goodness of God because you worship that doctrine. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, right. that's it. That's it. There's only two things that will stop healing from flowing. Only two. You want to know what they are? Yeah. One is unbelief. unbelief. Sin won't stop healing. How many people were in sin that Jesus healed? Uh -huh. Woo! Yeah. You see how we have a sacred cow doctrine? Yeah. Tell it. Yeah. We think sin can stop it. Demons can't stop it. Nope. Uh -uh. The devil can't stop healing uh -uh. from happening. Nope. Unbelief. Jesus could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. Mm -hmm. Except he healed a few sick folks. See, even their unbelief only block the bigger stuff, <clears throat> healing still seeped in, yes. even with their unbelief. Yeah, yeah. But there's one thing that will stop it. You have made the word of God, this is Jesus speaking, of none effect with your traditions. Mm -hmm. Woo! No, right. Woo -hoo. The traditions of the church will make the word of God of none effect. The only thing that will stop the healing power of God are your traditions of men. 95% of what the church preaches and teaches about healing is completely contrary to what the Bible says. 95% Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. What do we do? We teach people to pray for the sick. Hello? Oh, man. Hello? Hello? Wow. <laughs> Shift your thinking. Yes, yes. Now there's nothing wrong with praying. Uh -huh. Peter went to go raise Dorcas from the dead. He got there. She was Tabitha. She's the, the maker of purple. She's laid up in the bed, dead. Dead. Peter walks in, he kneels down and prays. Uh -huh. He's not praying for the sick person, he's praying, Lord, I need the mind of Christ on this come thing. On, come on. Then he turns to the dead body of Tabitha.